be up now instead of testing the market? Uh, I don't know. I feel like this time of my career, I kind of seen different places. I played for different coaches, different organizations, and um, you know, it's the best fit for me on the ice and off the ice for my family. And we've always enjoyed our time there. I've spoken highly of Winnipeg, and I would have never thought that four or five years ago. And you know, it's still like that. And then I think that that kind of speaks volumes of the organization and um, volumes of, you know, from ownership to management to the coaching staff, the players are there. And then there's a, you know, there's a belief that it's a good team that's got a lot of potential and it's got, you know, all the, almost all the pieces and we're close there. And so I think I just want to continue that and, and keep having fun with it. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Gregor. And afternoon, uh, Paul, welcome back. Um, your role with the Jets maybe changed a little bit last year, of course, a lot of versatility there moving to the wing. Just how do you maybe see it playing out uh, next year? Um, more of the same if, with maybe bouncing around different lines and different positions? Yeah, I think so. I think Paul does a good job of kind of kind of getting the best of, of everyone, different combinations and what's best for a team. And, uh, you know, I'm comfortable playing wing. I'm, you know, I think I'm better center than I am wing, but at the same time, there's certain players that if they're not as comfortable as wing, then, you know, we can adapt to that. And I've, I've said it before. I think when you're playing with good players, when um, you have different line combinations, things get stagnant throughout the season. So you got to be ready for anything. And uh, like I said, like when you're playing with some of those guys, you're enjoying it and you're just getting better and you're constantly learning and kind of just evolving as a player. So it's been, it's been fun. I think there's pros and cons to playing center, there's pros and cons playing wing. Um, but I think they, you know, everything kind of outweighs the cons, and I think it's it's a good situation to be in. And you know, when you have a coach like Paul who understands my game and knows me, and, and you know, you have constant feedback, it's you know, it's good for me just to bounce ideas off him or vice versa. And I feel like we both kind of we can think out there together and then find what's best for me or what's best for a team or what's best for different guys because um, throughout the season, different guys, you know, goes through up and downs, and it's. You know, dealing with a 23-year-old compared a 30-year-old, 35-year-old, everyone's a little different, you know. And so I'll try to make it as easy as possible for them because sometimes you got to get the best of different players, especially some of the, you know, high-scoring players on a team. And, um, you know, I'm all for for doing things like that and helping the team win. Go well, next to Gemma Carson smith from the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Gemma. Hi, Paul. You talked a little bit about the potential of this team. Where, where do you kind of see the ceiling being for next season? Yeah, I man, I think every year, um, you know, the ceiling's obviously always to win the, win the Stanley Cup. But um, I think kind of look at what you have there. And I think, you know, what you have in the net. I think, you know, what you have up front on the back end. And I think added, adding uh, Dylan yesterday, yesterday was a big piece. I think, um, you know, he has that sandpaper, that toughness. He's a good player. He can skate. He can make plays, you know. And, you know, I think I've said before, I think that, everyone thinks they're like one or two pieces away, but you know, when you have a goalie like Bucky and then you have the offensive firepower, and, you know, some of the dynamic defensemen, I mean, you're right there. And there's no perfect situation. There's no perfect team. And I think that, that just shows you that's the NHL these days, right? There's 20, Jesus, probably like 22 or 23 teams. I think they're going to win the cup every year at the start of the year, maybe more. Um, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it competitive. That's what makes every game uh, so impactful. And, uh, you see the drive and the hunger through the guys. And I think that makes a big difference too. I think sometimes you look at teams on paper, but you don't really know the identity or the character of those players. But then when you're around these guys, you realize um, how bad they want to win. And, you know, they were there a couple of years ago and they might've taken a step back because they had um, so many losses on the back end just through unfortunate unseen events. But, you know, what happened last year, you kind of get a taste of what the potential could be and you want to keep building on that. Go next to Kelly Moore from 680 CGOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, Gregor. Uh, good afternoon, Paul, and so happy that you're back. Uh, we hear it every time we talk to you on these Zoom call avails. Your teammates and your coaches talk about how you are the guy every teammate loves to talk to. How how much of that do you see yourself becoming even more involved in? And, and I guess maybe as a role model for the younger guys on this hockey club is is that something you take very seriously? Um, I, I don't think it's serious. I think it just kind of comes with age. I think it's just my personality. 
uh, I think when I was younger, you know, I had the likes of uh, Sackick and Brunette and Foot and Perrier and Turgeon. Um, a lot of different guys I kind of looked up to that whether I looked up to them because I played with my dad or I looked up to them because they were in the league for such a long time and I have high respect and always appreciate what they did on the ice and I think how they present themselves and carry themselves off the ice. And there's always, uh, I was always kind of a sponge. I've always been a, a probably better listener than I am a talker. Um, and I feel like when I have to say something, it's important. And I won't say it if I never learned from it or if someone else didn't teach me. And I feel like as you get older, you get more experience, you get more wisdom, and you try to help out the younger guys because I was in that, I was always fortunate. I, I really appreciate it now, but I think when I was younger, I didn't realize it to have my dad, to have someone that played the game, to have someone that was successful and, you know, the obstacles on the ice and the obstacles off the ice and how he carried himself. And I got to learn from that all the time. And now I'm really appreciating it because I realized a lot of these young guys, um, it's a whole different world and they, you know, they don't have anyone to lean on. So if I can help them guide them a little bit, um, I try to help them as much as I can. And just life lessons, right? Like little things that they're going to carry for the rest of their lives, not just in hockey, but, you know, you learn so much from hockey that kind of applies to the real world. And I just try to get my two cents and get my input, at, especially if guys are willing to learn or willing to ask. Go next to Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Thanks. Hey, Paul, congratulations on re-signing. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about the last season and there was a lot of up and downs in that season, you know, even in the playoffs, a lot of up and downs. What was most encouraging about the whole season and playoffs about this team in your mind? Uh, just the camaraderie. I think the no quit. I think, yeah, there's up and downs. Um, I, think, I think playing in a bubble, playing the same teams over and over again, you're going to have that. Um, we're pretty consistent all year. And then at the end of the year, they were kind of had a, had a little lull. But I think we, it, was good, it was good to see that the message that Paul kept sending, um, whether it was going to work or not, and if guys would buy into that, and you saw that like once the playoffs hit, and I think um, things got a little stagnant a little bit because you have already kind of clinched. You knew you probably weren't going to move, in, you know, a spot up or down. And so those when we went through that tough streak, uh, I think we learned a lot from ourselves. And then what happened against Edmonton, you know, sh showed us that you know if we buy in the system, if we play that team game, you know, we can beat anybody. But then I think you learn a lot against swept by Montreal too because we probably shouldn't have swept Edmonton, and then. Montreal probably shouldn't have swept us, you know, but I think you learn a lot of those things. And um, it's always, you know, even I played this my, well, I finished my 15th year. I don't know, but I keep learning every time too. And it's every team, every kind of opportunity, every challenge is a little different and you kind of get something out of it. And I think whether it's older guys or younger guys, uh, you grow from those experiences. And when you can keep that core intact, a lot of those same players, I think everyone remembers the success and kind of has that better taste of the defeat and, Kind of motivates them to bring more to the table and realize uh, what we can do as a team to, to win whether we're playing against you know a defensive team or a high flying offensive team. Go next to Murata Tesh from the Athletic. Go ahead, Murata. Thanks, Gregor. Hi, Paul. Congrats on the contract and the return. Uh, just for me, you were talking about, and when we ask you about this all the time, people leaning on you at this stage of your career. Um, who are you leaning on? And, and I know that you talked about the importance of family, the importance of fit, you know, back when we were asking you this stuff before, but who are you leaning on in terms of making these decisions and, and what advice are you reaching out and getting? Yeah. Um, you know, my dad's always kind of been kind of my closest uh, mentor and advisor when it comes to stuff like this. I think when it comes to uh, decisions like this, it's, you know, my dad, my agent, you know, I've known him for, 25 years he worked with my dad so I you know he's almost family to us and it's always nice to have a couple of bounce boards you know sometimes I get emotional they're the you know they're the rational ones and so sometimes it's good to get different perspective um, when it comes to decision making like this I think during the season for me I'll lean on like I said usually it's always my dad and then sometimes it's you know it's a guy like Alex Dean who I'm you know probably best friends with who we're the same age we're both similar boats and we both kind of gone through similar things. So sometimes it's just nice to talk to somebody else. But um, yeah, like I said, I've been fortunate. I have good people around me, uh, have good relationships around me. And sometimes, uh, and then sometimes it's my wife, actually. She actually does a good job of kind of letting me focus less on hockey and not take it so serious because sometimes you get too stressed just trying to do too much. And I think the, 
the harder you try at something and the more you focus on it, sometimes it can be bad for you. And she does good. She always kind of gives me a good perspective of having, you know, balance in my life with family, with the kids, um, with playing hockey, with taking care of yourself, but also enjoying, you know, what you're doing and enjoying kind of the present and where we are now. Well, next to Carter Brooks from Game On. Go ahead, Carter. Hey, Paul, congrats on the deal. Just kind of following up on what Marat was asking here. I know in the past you've talked about the importance of Haley and Draper and Riley and how your family connection, thousandth game, having them pulled from their classes in advance so they could prepare for this. How much of this contract is more about them rather than yourself? Uh, I mean, everything I do, it's, it's always kind of a, kind of a wee process, you know, so I've never done anything selfishly for myself. That's, I mean, that's just not the way I am. And, and so every time I always kind of make a decision, I always have that in the back of my mind, uh, whether it was before we had kids and now we have kids. So to me, I also wanted to go, like I said, I think when you get to my age and, and you're kind of looking at potential places you could play or what could be an ideal fit, as much as it is hockey, you know, part of it is also, you know, I want my family to be comfortable. And I think Winnipeg has done a great job of making them feel at home. And then I think having, uh, you know, Blake and Sam there and the kids having the same age as my kids, I think that, you know, that's a big bonus there. And I think um, it's easier for her to hang out with, you know, other wives that have kids than it is to hang out with some of these um, younger fiancés or girlfriends or 20, 23, 24. It's just, you know, it is. It's just, it's a different stage in your life. And so I think that made it easier for her. And, you know, in the end, I think she's always been about, you know, whatever is good for me, she's happy. She always goes along with the ride with it. And I've always been the other way where I want her to be happy. And I think that's why we have a good balance with each other. We're next to Ken Weeb from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Well, uh, you touched on Brennan Dillon earlier. You would have played against him a lot back in your St. Louis days when he was in Dallas and also obviously in the Pacific Division. Uh, what's it like to see his growth as a player? And what does it mean uh, for your group to bring him in uh, for next season and beyond? Yeah, I think it means a lot. I think, like I said, um, I feel like his offensive game has grown a lot in the last three or four years. The skating, his, his puck making ability, whether it's, you know, kind of getting out of a breakout or leading the breakout, you know, make that first pass or jump into the play. And I think early in his career, I think he was more, uh, I don't want to say stay at home, but I think his game's evolved a little bit. And I think he does play with that edge. He does play with that nastiness a little bit. And I think, that's big. I think uh, you need a combination, right? You could have those skilled guys, but you also need those guys that are tough to play against, they're annoying to play against. And I think he brings that. And I think that's a big element of, of I was texting wheels that why well, I'm really excited that um, they had an opportunity to bring him in. Go back to Kelly Moore from CGOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, Paul, just uh, hearing you talk about your family uh, and that sort of thing, and I don't know where you're joining us from right now. Uh, but in Manitoba, in Canada in general, the needle's moving pretty good COVID-wise. So for this coming season, and, and we heard many stories about how the families really had to struggle last year, how much more from a family perspective are you looking forward uh, to this year maybe being a little bit closer to normal? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing was uh, just travel, you know, because sometimes we're at, I mean, we're at town for a while, and sometimes especially last year, you couldn't, things were shut down. So I think sometimes it's nice for, like for example, this year, I think Thanksgiving, we're out of town. I think we're on the road for like before and after. And I know, uh, and my wife's close with her, you know, she's a family person too, the way I am. So I know her and the kids, you know, probably almost guaranteed will be flying back home to see her parents, you know? And so it's stuff like that, that makes it easier. And I think we've always been like that where if we've had road trips, you know, they're always, whether they're doing little trips, even if it's just going skiing somewhere, or, you know, going out of Whistler or Banff or something that they want to do this year or this past year, but they couldn't because last minute everything kind of changed with the quarantine. I think stuff like that, that like, that's a part you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you, you have a feeling if you kind of look down the road that things, you know, will slowly get better every time. I think last year was just so unique and, and unpredictable. Um, I mean, if, if it does happen, it does happen. I think, you know, you can get through it. If you got through it last year, I think you get through anything. So, I think for that that part, I think uh, I think I'm, I'm excited for the future holds. I'm not too worried about the situation that's going on now. I think you know you might see the worst stuff on the news kind of daily, but um, from where it was to where it's now to where it's going to be in two or three months and so forth, I think 
like you said, things are always kind of slowly moving back to normal. And I think that's, that's a big difference for, for the whole world, for society itself. And final question to Carter Brooks from Game On. Go ahead, Carter. Hi again, Paul. Just uh, jumping back to the acquisition of Brendan Dillon last night. Uh, is the clear cut leader with games played in terms of postseason experience, you on the team right now, what does it mean to have a new second place guy based on uh, current players under contract and playoff games experience and how much important that is for the Jets going forward? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he knows how to play his game. I think his, his game shoot is suited perfectly for playoffs. Um, He's been on good teams, whether it's Dallas or San Jose or, or Washington. Um, so he knows what it takes, and, and, you know, he wants to win too. And I think once you've been in playoffs so many times, you kind of have a taste of success a little bit, whether you've gone far, whether you've lost, whether you've won, whether you haven't, you know, you just want to be back there. But you realize every year is a new year how hard it is from the start of the season. And um, having that experience, you realize you, you never get complacent. You never want to get used to making playoffs because everyone's been on teams – well, not, not everyone, but most of the guys have been on teams where everything went great one year and then everyone relaxed thinking, you know, everything was automatic for next year and all of a sudden they had a bad year and just realized you don't want to waste a year like that. And having older guys, having guys that have had that success, um, you don't take anything for granted. And I think um, that's kind of a message everyone kind of says around the league. Um, but it's just, you just don't know. There's so many unpredictabilities, whether it's injuries or you know, having an off year, it, you realize kind of that your time in this league is precious. It goes by quick, so you want to enjoy it. But at the same time, um, you want to leave it all on the ice and never kind of never have any regrets about, you know, not training too hard or, or worrying about something else when, you know, this only happens for a short kind of time span in our life. So I think having him there with so many games played, um, you know, it just brings more hunger to the team and more success and, and more motivation for everybody. Thanks very much, Paul. Thanks for doing this.